Future Broncos, welcome back to another episode of Bronco Scoop. I'm your host, Daisy Lemos, a fifth year architecture major here at Cal Poly Pomona and a student assistant at Project Caminos in the Office of Student Success. Thank you for joining us for this new episode of season four. On today's episode, I will be giving you the scoop on admissions to Cal Poly Pomona. I know this is a scary and exciting time, so we invited a special guest to help ease some of the nerves. So thank you for joining us again. Could you please introduce yourself and your role at Cal Poly Pomona? So my name is Jasmine Flores and I'm an admission an admissions counselor for the Office of Admissions. So October and November are peak months for students applying to Cal Poly Pomona. Let's start with the tip. What tip do you have for seniors and transfers applying for fall of 2023? To take your time with the application. I know applicants like to get it in early, but we don't make admission decisions until the application closes. So there's really no rush in getting your application in the first week that the application opens. Um, keep in mind that we make admission decisions based on self-reported information. So what you put on the application is what we're making our admission decision based off of. So if you rush through it, it creates a greater opportunity for errors to happen. So just take your time filling it out. Yeah, that's a great tip. Where can students interested in applying find out what is required to apply to Cal Poly Pomona? So our website has everything that an applicant is going to need to know. It lists all of the requirements on there. If for any reason students are still confused by their requirements, I always encourage them to reach out to our admissions office. They can always contact me and I can go ahead and walk them through those requirements. And what are some of the um, admission requirements for freshmen and transfers that you can share? So for freshmen, it's a lot more straightforward. You have to have your A through G uh, coursework done. So your math, your English, history, things like that. Uh, those have to be completed by high school graduation. You have to have a minimum of a 2.5 GPA. And that is just to be evaluated. Keep in mind, depending on the competitiveness of this uh, cycle's applicant pool is going to depend what we admit at. Uh, but those are the two main things that are needed to be evaluated. And then for transfer students, they need to have a minimum of a 2.0 GPA in all transferable coursework, a minimum 60 units. 30 of those units do need to be general education. They also need to have their golden four completed, which for them is their um, English course, a math course, a critical thinking course, and an oral communication course. And then they do need to be in good academic standing at the last institution that they attended. So I remember applying through the CSU site, www.calstate.edu slash apply. What should students have on hand when applying? Unofficial transcripts. And this goes for both freshmen and transfer students. Uh, your coursework is one of the main things we're using to make our admission decision. So you want to make sure that what you're inputting is accurate to the transcript that your school has on file, because if admitted, we are going to ask for those transcripts. So we don't want anything to deviate too far away from what the transcript says and what you put on the application. Also, knowing the correct social security number, we get a lot of applicants who put the wrong one and that directly impacts the student's ability to get financial aid. And so you just wanna make sure all your biodemographical information and your transcripts are on hand when filling out the application. Um, when is the deadline to apply to Cal Poly Pomona? So the application opened on October 1st and it does close on November 30th. Um, that being said, I don't encourage applicants to wait till the last day to apply. A lot of students do that and then sometimes the website will crash and things like that. So while you want to take your time with the application, you also want to try to get it in before that deadline. So I want to remind listeners that there are now three CSUs in the Polytechnic Universities when applying. So there's Pomona, there's San Luis Obispo, and there's Humboldt. And when selecting the campuses, make sure that you select Pomona. We've heard a lot of students like get confused and they, they're they like, oh, I thought I was applying to Pomona, but it was actually Humboldt. Does admission here from students who applied to the wrong Cal Polys? Yes, so we, that is one of the things we hear a lot about, especially um, when students are like, hey, I've never heard back from you guys about my application. Did you guys receive it? 
And then we'll kind of walk through everything. And then I realized that they ended up applying to San Luis Obispo, tends to be the school that people mix us up with. So when you're applying on Cal State Apply, you want to make sure that the application says Cal Poly Pomona. If it says Cal Poly, that is Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Then obviously this is Cal Poly Humboldt. That's the incorrect school as well. And so once students do that, say they apply to the wrong campus and it's past the November 30th deadline, applications are not allowed to be transferred. So if it's past that deadline, unfortunately, there's not much our office can do in terms of that fall 2023 application. So what does the admission timeline look like for students? So as I mentioned, the application will be October 1st, November 30th. Students will get, or applicants will get two emails from us. One that just says, hey, we've received your application. And then the second email will be claim your Bronco Direct. So our student portal, that's what um, applicants will utilize to continue to check their application status. And then we're going to go silent for a while. And that tends to freak applicants out. Um, but you won't really hear anything from us for a few months. If you're a transfer student, you will hear from us in January, because in January, we do have something called our academic record update. And that's when transfer students can go back into the Cal State Apply application. They will update their fall 2022 grades and any spring 2023 coursework. And then admission decisions will start to roll out at the end of February into April. So freshmen really won't hear anything from us until admission decisions go out. Yeah, yeah, I remember that like silent period because some universities like it differs when you apply. Mm -hmm. And so I would hear from my friends like applying to other universities, like in January, they had already received their like admissions decisions. And I was like, wow, Pomona is taking a very <laughs> long time. <laughs> and we definitely do not make any admission decisions earlier than late February. So nobody will be hearing from us until late February. Yeah. So we offer 54 majors, some of which are impacted. Can you explain to our listeners what impacted is? And I know that each university has a local area. How does impacted affect those from a local school or college? So impaction means, generally speaking, that a school receives more qualified applicants than we can accommodate. Obviously, we are limited to the number of people we can admit based on space on the campus, right? So when a program becomes very competitive or very popular, that means the applicant pool is larger and therefore the people we admit is at a smaller scale. And so for a local area, every CSU has a local area that they serve, right? And the, that local area is guaranteed admissions if they meet admission requirements. The caveat to that is, is if you're applying to an impacted major, that local area guarantee kind of goes out the window what happens is that these students then get what we call an additional admission consideration, um, but there is no guarantee that they will be admitted into that major as opposed if they were trying to get into a major that wasn't impacted. Just like selected architecture, and it's one of the most mm -hmm. like impacted majors. And I was, I just like selected it. And then like a few months later, I was looking into what it was. And then it was like during that waiting period uh -huh. where I hadn't heard from them. And I was like, I'm not going to get in because it's <laughs> impacted. I was like, I could have picked anything else and then transferred in. But then when I got in, I actually learned that you can't actually transfer into architecture. So like it was the right decision to pick it from the beginning. But I didn't know. <laughs> but I remember I was like, oh, no, it's so impacted. <laughs> And I never advise students to pick a major that they believe is going to be easier to get into because we don't guarantee a major change, even when you're a continuing student here. Major yeah. changes are approved by the department, and if the department can't accommodate that major change, it may be denied. So I always advise students to pick the major, even if it's impacted, that they're actually wanting to study because the last thing we want is for you to attend CPP and graduate with a major that you never intended to take. Um, so definitely apply to the major that you want to uh, study. Yeah. So during the application, you have to select a major and then it asks for an alternative major. How does admission read those two majors and should students enter an alternative major? I always advise students to enter an alternate major, um, regardless of what your 
primary major is, definitely enter some type of secondary major that you would like to study. We do not guarantee admission into an alternate major. We admit into alternate majors of spaces available. Keep in mind that your second choice may be somebody's first choice, right? And so if there's space available in the specific program, then we will admit alternate majors, but it's never guaranteed. But we still advise everyone to select an alternate major. If the major is impacted, so say somebody wants to do computer engineering and they want to do aerospace engineering as their alternate major, the application will not let you. You cannot choose an alternate major as an impacted major. So it'll have to be one that's not impacted. Um, now I'm like, what did I pick? <laughs> <laughs> because I thought it was civil engineering, but civil engineering is impacted. It's impacted. Mm -hmm. It must have been, I don't know. I must have picked something random then. I don't know what, it, I, what my alternate was. And it completely was. makes sense that if you're applying to one engineering, you would want to pick a second one as an alternate major. Yeah. And almost all of our engineering majors are impacted. There are some that aren't, but the application, it will not populate that program if it's an impacted program. So you will not be able to select it. Um, I just learned that today. <laughs> Ugh, I'm like, not, I, I wonder what I picked. I don't know. We'll Unless have to I'm, go back and see. Yeah, because I, I applied for like, very random majors. Like mm -hmm. this was the only university I applied for architecture. And it, so that's why I, I was like, okay, I'll go here. But I picked like civil engineering, sociology. Like I was, <laughs> oh, you were like, all over the place. Yeah, I wanted to do everything. I was like, yeah, I I'm could do that. <laughs> when will transfers find out how their units transfer to Cal Poly Pomona? So once transfer students have to send us official transcripts twice, if, if admitted, we don't want any transcripts unless we request them. So unless you've been admitted, you don't need to send us anything, but they send us initial transcripts with fall grades in March, and then they will send us final transcripts with spring grades in July. And so what happens is we create what's called a transfer credit report where basically their units from their community college or other university are then transferred over to our school. Those reports are really not finished until their orientation day. So orientation for transfer students runs from July to August and we award our transfer credit based on a student's orientation day. So they really won't see what units are being transferred over to meet what requirements until the summer. On the admissions website, is there a page or tab you'd like to highlight to students to check out? I think the entire web page you guys should check out. But <laughs> um, when applying, definitely the requirements just to make sure that you are meeting all of the requirements and you're understanding what is required for admissions. Also, if you're applying to an impacted major, this is specifically or especially true for transfer students because transfer students do have what we call required or recommended coursework for impacted majors. Um, so beyond the admission requirements, especially for engineering, there's going to see, be some supplemental requirements that students need to meet. It's very basic things that you could take at your community college, like calculus and things like that. But you'll want to make sure you check out our impacted majors um, web page because it lists all of those course for every impacted major that we have. And then also what we call student profiles. So there's a freshman student profile and a transfer student profile. And what these student profiles are is that it explains what eligibility index or GPA we had admitted with with the previous cycle. So currently it's all of our stuff is for what we admitted with for fall 2022. Obviously we don't have fall 2023 because we haven't admitted anybody yet for that, but it's a good guide to see, does the GPA have is it high enough for me to be admitted into this program? Obviously, every cycle is different because it's a new pool of applicants. So the eligibility indexes or the GPAs are going to be different, but it is a good way to kind of base, do I have a shot at this program? Yeah, I discovered that page after, when I learned that it was infected mm -hmm. and the GPA for architecture was like really high. And I was, yeah. like, oh. I was like, oh my God, I'm not gonna <laughs> get in. So I don't know how I still got in, but yeah um one of my favorite pages on that site is the application checklist it's a good page to kind of like follow along and make sure you're keeping up with the admissions process 
Yeah, that's a really good web page. And we usually have, which we will um, once I get them, but we usually have principal checklists that students can then print out if they or keep it on their phone or anything like that. Um, that kind of gives what the student's next steps are. What other tips do you have for students when applying to Cal Poly Pomona? Other tips, um, well, besides taking the application slow, making sure that you utilize all of the resources available to you. Basically, every community college has a transfer center and they hold workshops for the application. The application is long and it's a lot of questions that you may not understand or you may not know. And so please reach out to help us to your transfer center or high schools also do application workshops. Mm -hmm attend them. Don't try to do it by yourself and also fill out the application yourself. Don't have somebody else fill it out. I know parents want to help with the application and they should absolutely be involved in this process, but we should really be trying to get the applicant to fill it out because if they call us, we're going to ask them questions about the application. And if they have, if there weren't the ones that filled it out, it's harder for them to answer our questions, right? So while we want to collaborate with as many people as possible, we also want to take ownership of that application. Yeah, that's a great tip. Um, thank you so much for joining us. That's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed getting the scoop on admissions from Jasmine. And good luck on your admissions um, applications. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to the admissions office at Cabo Kimona. Subscribe to our channel to never miss a scoop and follow our Instagram at cpp.broncoscoop. If you have any questions or want me to talk about anything CPP related, email us at caminos at cpp.edu. Bronco Scoop is supported by Capitalism Pomona's Office of Student Success, Equity, and Innovation and with funding from the Department of Education Hispanic Serving Institute Grant, Project Caminos. Tune in for more!